Harley is on the hunt for birds. Yeah. Go get the bird. It's Christmassy. Yes, but not that one. Are you ever gonna wear that? This is my Christmas hat. Nice, I like it. Can you send that for I, a minute? I can't send it. find something to make with it. <laughs> 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 Today's travel day. We're getting ready to go to the beach, to Texas. So we don't have any plans. We're not really sure how it works. Uh, from everything we've looked up so far, you can just pull up on the beach. Now there's a five or $10 fee and you have to have a sticker. So we're trying to look up some information on where we get that. So when we get there, we can just go to, straight to the beach. We filled our gray tanks this morning. Nico actually overflowed the shower. We can typically take about eight RV showers. We've only been here two nights. I think we got five before we fill them and I think the reason why is the water here is really soft and my kids really don't understand about soft water if you know about soft water you know it never really feels like the soap comes off and so I think they were running the water a lot longer than they should have but it's fine I got to take a shower in the, the shower house here it's really nice it's nice to take a hot shower and not have to turn it off so we're getting ready to disconnect and get on the road all right another sticker where are we going Sabrina where are we going uh, Louisiana Yay! All right, next stop, Texas. Yes! We are on our way to Walmart. We have to get a fresh battery and propane so that we can prepare for two days dry camping on the beach. We're going to the Boulevard Peninsula, which is right next to Galveston. Galveston is actually where our reservations are, but not until Wednesday. So we'll see you there. So you know how we stop at a rest area? Yes. And then we go, and the time on the GPS says, like we lost 40 minutes. Uh -huh. And it feels like it's, we were just 10 minutes down. Yes. So I think we should time it. So we'll time as soon as I get off the exit, and then we'll stop the time as soon as we get back onto the highway yeah, at the speed. So we'll have that amount of time that we missed, and then we'll match it to what the GPS says we lost see to see if they match, match the same. I think we should have Nico time it 
and not tell us. And then we can get anecdotal and factual. So we say how much time we felt it took to fill up, and then we'll have the actual time that it took, and then the difference that the GPS says that we lost. What do you think? Okay, let's do it. All right, Nico, get ready. All right, go. Look at the time. Don't look at the clock. How long do you feel that that took? We uh, go to the bathroom, fuel up. Twenty-five. Twenty-five minutes. Yeah. See, I already guess like ten fifteen. Arrival time now is six forty-nine. Nico, how long did it take us? Twenty-four minutes. Twenty-four minutes. So yeah, that's, that's right. right. That's so right. I don't think it's the GPS. It's the fact that it would take forever. Well, yeah, that too. <laughs> For me, it felt like 10 minutes, 15 at the most, and we lost 25 minutes. So there you go, proved it. Don't question Google Maps. Alright, so we're in Texas. We're in, uh, this is Crystal Beach, straight in front of us. We're on State Road 87. We're about four miles from where we think the turnoff is to the beach. We stopped at a gas station that we could actually fit the rig. Paula went inside to go ask. There is a sticker or a pass that we're supposed to have to be able to camp on the beach. We're still not exactly sure where the pull-in is or where to get the stickers. Everything we found online says most stores have them you just have to ask and see so we went in to see if we can get some more information and maybe get some navigation uh to be able to get to the beach so we're really close say what they don't sell it they say that uh, uh this month they're not selling the passes and if the officers stop me they can't stop me because they is it the end of the year so he's like you're you don't have to buy a pass okay and if they say something the officer asks me is it like tell that you're trying to buy at the gas station and they said they're not selling so you guys name have no <laughs> blood type dna no <laughs> make sure home address no okay but we're good all right we're gonna be good and he said like make a left or any entrance and you can park anywhere but towards the end is better towards the end is better mm -hmm. how far is too far you didn't say that you didn't ask that no okay but we'll see all right let's uh I see. I know it's fine. We made it to the beach. We uh, had to dig some holes to get the camper level, but we got everything set up. 
it's really dark and I tried to shoot some video and you can't really see anything at all. So um, we're gonna start grilling some burgers and get you some footage tomorrow. So what are you making this? I got burgers Poppy. and caramelized onions going on back here. Poppy. Well, beach burgers. They're beach, beach burgers. Beach burgers. It's a nice flashlight. Yeah, Alfredo got it for me. That's the chef. Pretty awesome. Now we are only half of the RCRV crew. Anthony and Alfredo stayed behind in Georgia in order to be able to celebrate Christmas with their family. So we are missing them a little bit. I do want to go over some of the things that we've learned getting here and try to unpack that information. So bear with me. I'm going to try to squeeze in a lot of information in as little time as possible. Now when we first left for this trip, the only thing we knew is that there did exist a beach in Texas that you could go camping on with your RV. And that was about it. So there was a lot that we had to learn in order to get here. And while that was somewhat exciting, uh, it was also nerve wracking in, in some instances. So I would like to give you the information that we've learned in case this is something that you would be interested in doing with your family. Let's start with the route. We came in on I-10. Now remember, we were leaving Louisiana heading towards Texas. So we we're coming from the east heading west. And I have to say, as soon as we hit Texas, the roads got super bumpy. They say everything's bigger in Texas. That includes the potholes. So we stayed on I-10 for about an hour or two, and then it shot us down to State Road 87. Now, 87 is actually a very nice drive. It was a very well-paved road, pretty much just a straight shot. Now we are on Crystal Beach. It is in the Boulevard Peninsula. Now we are eventually heading to Galveston, and that will be where we spend Christmas at the RV resort that we have reservations for. But this was a stop that we wanted to take for a couple days just to be able to camp on the beach. Now going over towards Galveston, we will have to take a ferry. There's a 24 hour ferry that runs. It is a free ferry and it will take you across to the other side to be able to hit Galveston. Now let's talk about the beach. I have to be honest, this was Paola's dream trip. I was a little bit apprehensive. I'd never camped on the beach before, driving in the sand, pulling an RV. I didn't know if I was gonna get stuck. I didn't know if there was going to be sand all over the place. I really didn't know what to expect. I would like to tell you that after being here, it is amazing. To be able to wake up in your bed and turn and look out the window and see the views that you can see here, 
it's absolutely breathtaking. You can stand in any part of your RV and you can see the ocean. You can hear the ocean. We have our windows open. There is a breeze that comes through one side of the camper and goes out the other side. Getting up in the morning for your morning coffee and looking out the window and seeing the ocean, well, there's nothing like it. I would say that this has surpassed every one of my expectations. Now, as far as the location on Crystal Beach, there are a couple ways to get here. If you're on State Road 87, pretty much any road that goes in the beach direction will eventually lead to the sand where you can drive your vehicle on. We stopped at a gas station on the way in here. We needed some information about the parking tag that you're supposed to have, and then also the entrance to the beach and where we went. Now what they told us was that you can enter the beach on any one of these inlets. We chose to drive all the way to the end of the peninsula. So we entered on the very last road that leads to the beach before the peninsula ends. We did this so that we could actually see the entire beach and drive down and find a spot. Now there is a parking pass that you're supposed to have. I believe it's $10. And what we found out is that pretty much any shop or gas station within this town can sell it to you. You pay $10, you get the tag, you put it in your window and you're free to stay on the beach. Now on the beaches, you're allowed to have fires, you're allowed to have pets, you're allowed to have vehicles. Pretty much the only rule that I know of is you need to stay off the sand dunes. They are protected by the state. Now driving on the beach, this was where I was a little bit nervous on. The sand is not fluffy sugar sand. It is very hard, compact sand. It's very moist and wet all the time. I believe because there's not a big grade to the ocean. So I think the water level from the ocean kind of goes under the sand and keeps it moist. This actually helps with traction because it's very pressed and compact and a little bit moist, so you don't slip half as much as you would think. I would say the only time that I actually put the truck into four wheel drive was to get the camper level. But pulling the camper onto the beach, backing it up, turning around, we made one U-turn at the other end of the beach and decided to come this way. All of that was in two wheel drive. So it is very manageable to drive your RV on the beach. We did see a couple Class A motorhomes and there were also a couple travel trailers and we saw a fifth wheel as well. So pretty much anything you have, you can probably get on this beach without worry. Now I will say leveling was a unique experience. Now there is a slight grade to the beach, as in most beaches. Now we parked right in front of the sand dunes because we weren't really sure where the tide level was. After being here a day, I can tell you that the tide never comes past the halfway point from where the ocean is to where our camper is. So we're completely safe. But I do like having the sand dunes here just for the atmosphere and the view that you get from them. So leveling the camper. The first thing we tried when we got here last night to level was our Lynx levelers. Now that didn't work at all. If you understand Lynx levelers, they're hollow. So when you put them on a firm ground, they're great and they'll raise the camper. What we found is we would put one, drive on it, and it would sink into the sand. We backed up and we would stack two more, drive up on them, and they would just continue to sink down. There's not a lot of footing on those to compress the sand, so they just sink straight into the ground. The second thing we tried was to put pieces of wood under the Lynx levelers, drive onto the wood, and then the Lynx levelers. The problem we found with this though, is that the sand got on the surface of the wood and the Lynx levelers would slide off the wood because of the sand. Eventually what we did, what was probably the most easiest thing, is on the opposite side that we needed to raise, we actually dug down in front of the tires, little trench holes, and then just pulled the camper forward, which dropped that side of the camper down and level it out. Now that was really easy. Now the one caution I would tell you is that that was the part that I did need four wheel drive. Once the camper wheels get inside those holes that you dig, to be able to pull it out of that, you may need a little bit of extra oomph. Or you could always just trench a ramp, that way it's not so much force you have to pull out. Now I really like this location. You have the illusion of privacy and seclusion. Now as far as privacy, you really do have privacy. We can see the next camper. There was a fifth wheel here that left this morning, but it was probably 100 yards away from us. 
and the same in the opposite direction. So people tend to spread out and give you your privacy. There is no quiet time, so we were able to play music last night around the fire pit, and we weren't bothering anybody. Now on the front of you, you have ocean, and on the back of you, you have sand dunes and a field. Now, this is what I mean by the illusion of seclusion, because you can't see it, but the main road is probably another 100 yards on the other side of this field, and off that main road, if you go five miles down, you have gas station, you have some local shops and some local restaurants, you have a mini mart, they also have propane exchange in case you do need propane, and there are also a couple of RV parks. Now, I would assume that if you happen to fill your tanks while being on the beach, you could probably talk to one of those RV parks for a nominal fee and be able to dump your tanks. So let's talk camper capacities. We are running a propane and our battery. We also have a full fresh tank. Now our fresh tank is 48 gallons and we have one battery connected. Now we did stop at Walmart, we bought a fresh battery because the battery that we have is pretty much trash. You're not supposed to take these batteries down below 50% discharge. Now when we first bought the camper, we didn't know anything about batteries. And there were a few times that our battery was actually drawn down to zero in storage and that was due to parasitic loss. Now since then, I've actually put a battery disconnect onto the camper so that we can just cut all the power off to the camper when it's in storage. However, the damage was done to the battery. So our current battery is not the best to be able to dry camp for several days. So we did buy an extra one. That being said, we are coming to the end of our second day here at the beach and we are still running off of our original battery. Now, the battery indicator that comes with a camper, which is not the best at indicating what your battery health and level is at, that does say that we're still at two thirds. Now, whether that will last through tomorrow, I don't know, but we do have a backup just in case. I would say that if you have good batteries in your rig, you should be fine for at least a couple days here at the beach. Now, we have two full bottles of propane, and if you're used to camping, you know that the propane usually lasts a long time. The one thing that will suck the propane down quickly will be your furnace. Now, we did run the furnace the first night. We ran it for about two to three hours just to warm up the camper and then turned it off. And the rest of the night, it was fine. The temperatures here now, during the day, the highs are in the high 60s. Uh, it was about 67, 68 today with full sun, which really made it feel warmer. And at night, I think the low is around 50. So it's not too cold. We close the windows at night. We run the furnace for a couple hours and that pretty much keeps the heat that we need inside the camper to be able to sleep fine. So my fear of having to run the furnace for hours and hours overnight and draining our batteries really is not coming to fruition. Now this will highly depend on what time of season you come to the beach if you're planning on doing this as well. So overall guys, I would tell you that this was an amazing stop. It exceeded every expectation I had and in my head, this was going to be a one and done type trip check it off the list, went to the beach, never do it again. I will tell you honestly, we will definitely be doing this again. This is more amazing than I could ever have imagined. Now the sand aspect really concerned me. Now naturally you're on the beach, so you're going to have sand, but the texture of the sand, and given that it is always moist, it's never really dry and powdery, it does not stick to your feet and your clothes as much as normal beach sand does. So I would say, with normal maintenance, we sweep out the entrance. We have a hard rule with the kids that there are no shoes inside the camper. We have a shoe rack outside that we've set up for them. But doing those few things, we have really been able to keep the sand down inside the camper. So I was pleasantly surprised. And now that that sphere is out of the way, I have no qualms about coming back and doing this again. So that's it guys. I just wanted to give you an update of all the information that we discovered on our adventure here to the beach. If there's any more information that you would like to know, please leave a comment below. We'd be happy to share that information with you. Now stay with us because our adventure is not over. Tomorrow we're getting up and we're going to Galveston, Texas. We're staying at Jamaica Beach RV Resort and we'll be there through Christmas. Thanks for sharing this adventure with us.